One is the schwa. This is the most common and the most lazy sound in English. How do you make this sound? To make this sound properly, just breathe out of your mouth and then just make a sound. Uh. Okay, but when do we use the schwa? One of the reasons we use a schwa is in unstressed syllables. Example, cousin. The first syllable is the stressed syllable, ka. The second syllable, that's unstressed, so it has a weak form and that will take the schwa. Cousin. Cousin. Say it with me. Cousin. Other words, for example, freedom. Again, the first syllable is stressed, free. The second syllable is not. It's unstressed, so schwa. Not freedom, no. Freedom. Freedom. Say it with me. Freedom. Or this word, effort. The stress is in the first syllable, eh. So we pronounce that sound correctly, eh. The next syllable, not stressed, so schwa. Effort. Effort. Or this word has three syllables. The middle syllable is stressed, may. So the first syllable has a schwa sound. Not amazing, no. It's uh amazing. Amazing! And where am I now? I'm not in London, no. The first syllable is stressed, the second syllable is weak and has that schwa sound, London. Another reason we use the schwa is when a word has the er sound. For example, in American English, the er sound has a very strong R, but in British English, it doesn't. For example, my job is a teacher. I say teacher, Americans would say teacher. If I get sick, I go to the hospital and I see a doctor? No, I see a doctor. Doctor. Say it with me, doctor. If I need legal help, I will not see a lawyer. I will see a lawyer. Lawyer. Say it with me, lawyer. Someone who works in a university could be a professor? No, professor. Professor. So repeat those four words with me. Remember to include that schwa sound. Teacher. Doctor. Lawyer. Professor. Two. British English is non-rhotic. What the hell is non-rhotic? Non-rhotic means that we don't pronounce the R in the same way that, for example, American English pronounces it. We pronounce it in that lazy, smooth way. Instead of saying here, no, we say here, warm, butterfly. Um, yeah, actually not every British accent is non-rhotic. Some are actually rhotic. Okay, yes, fine, some are. For example, West Country or the pirate accent. We all know how pirates sound. They don't say ah, no, they say arr. That one is rhotic. For example, we might say bird. In the West Country, they might say it like this. Bird. Is there an exception to this? Yes, and that is when we use R linking or intrusion. For example, in a sentence like, no better actor is better at acting than Ben Affleck. If you pronounce every word separately, then yes, you don't use R linking or intrusion. But that sounds like a robot and you're not a robot. You might be, I, I don't know. If you're a robot, that's cool. But if you want to sound like a natural sounding British human, then you might want to use our linking. So this sentence would sound like this. No better raptor is better at acting than Ben Affleck. Try and say it with me. No better raptor is better at acting than Ben Affleck. Three, when you have a regular verb ending in the past, it will always have an ED ending. But there are three ways that we can pronounce the ed ending. One is like a t, t. One is like a d, d. And one is like ed. But how do you know which one has which ending? Well, this all has to do with voiced and unvoiced or voiceless sounds. What's a voiced and unvoiced sound? It's super easy. Let's compare the sounds of this and this. Put your hand to your throat. Make this sound. Now add a vibration. Now you're making this sound. 
So this, because there's no vibration, it's called unvoiced or voiceless. With this one, there is a vibration, so it's called a voiced sound. S -s -s. Okay, voiced and voiceless. Why should I care? Well, it really helps to know what a voiced and unvoiced sound is if you want to know how that ED ending should sound. For example, take these words. Kiss, walk, work, brush. All of those words finish with an unvoiced sound. S, sh, k. So when you put them in the past, they have the ED endings. So how does that ED ending sound? It sounds like a t, kissed, walked, worked, brushed. It makes more sense if you say it in a sentence. He walked away. Well, it sounds really natural if you link that end sound into the next word. Walked away. Notice that the t links into that next word. Walked away. He walked away. It sounds natural, right? Now let's look at these words. Use, play, smell. They all finish in a voiced sound. So voiced sounds make that ed sound like a d. Used, played, smelled. In a sentence, we played a game. Fine, but sounds a bit robotic. So let's make it sound natural and make that d sound link into that next word. We play the game. We play the game. We played a game. When do we say the ed like an ed? It's not walk ed, it's not work ed, it's not wanted. <gasps> Boom! Wanted, ended, needed, visited. They either end in a T or a D, so the ed sounds like an ed. Let's use it in a sentence. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I just, I needed a moment. Four is that glottal T. What is a glottal T? In the word uh oh, the uh sound makes your throat close and makes an uh sound. Now in some words, you can replace the t sound with that uh sound. Not in every T sound, no. Some T sounds. For example, at the end of words, but, it, that, not. Those words, cool. Glottal T to finish, fine, it sounds great. But if there is a vowel sound, T, vowel sound, for example, in words like better, water, no, it sounds, I'm just gonna say, it sounds stupid. Don't do that. Water, better, yeah, it sounds a little bit stupid, just don't do it. Also in words that have consonant sound, T, vowel sound, for example, mountain, mountain, just no, don't do that. But lastly, if there is a vowel, T sound, consonant sound, for example, in words like Batman, then it's fine. You can use that glottal T, Batman. But again, if you want to know more about the glottal T, when to use it, when to not, click here. There is a whole lesson on it. Five is the ing sound. Sometimes, to sound a bit more natural, you might want to contract the ing to an in sound and lose that last G. Reading, writing, running, going. All these words are examples of when you can contract ing to in. Well, notice that those are all words with more than one syllable and the last syllable is an ing sound. So for example, singing has two syllables and in fact, two ing sounds, singing. The second ing you can contract to an in, singing. I've got a meeting today, fine. But it could sound more natural if you add the glottal T and contract that ing to an in. I've got a meeting today. When can't you contract it then? If there's only one syllable, sing, sin, no. King, it's one syllable. Don't contract it to kin. Thing, thin, no, don't contract those. Only if it's more than one syllable and the final syllable is an ing sound, then it's fine. I'm the kin of England. See, it doesn't work. Yes, England has more than two syllables, but it's the first syllable that has the ing, not the final one. Number six, be careful of silent letters. For example, the most commonly mispronounced word is this one. How would you say it? No, the P, we don't pronounce it. Not receipt, no. We pronounce it receipt, receipt. Not sword, sword. The W is silent. 
Okay, next one. No, the B is silent. We say it like subtle, subtle, subtle. What's the day after Tuesday? Wednesday, Wednesday. We don't say Wednesday, no, Wednesday. If you are from a different country, you are what? Nope, the G is silent, it's foreign, foreign. Again, we have a perfect example of the first syllable being stressed, so the second syllable is weak, has the schwa sound. Foreign, run, foreign. Say it with me, foreign. Seven, practice, practice, practice the f sound. The f and the v sounds are so important. Try to be aware of the f sound in words and don't pronounce it like a t or a d or a s or a z. <laughs> Before we begin, I've got a joke for you. What did the German philosopher say on the Titanic? I'm sinking. Ooh, you suck! <laughs> I know, I'm great. I'm just great. Now for most non-native English speakers, this sound is super difficult, but you will need to practice it. Let's practice together. A difficult word like this one. Try it with me. Three. Three. After Wednesday, we have Thursday. Say it with me. Thursday. Thursday. A word you will say many times during the day, or you should do if you're polite, is this one. Thank you. Thank you. Say it with me. Thank you. And on special days, you want to say happy birthday. It's not bird day, it's birthday. Birthday. Say it with me. Practice. Birthday. For a longer explanation of how exactly to make this sound with your mouth, click here to see that video. Eight. Eight. You could have amazing pronunciation and then these words Ah, they let you down, they disappoint you. So let's practice them. This one is very often mispronounced. Not ox, it's ask. Ask, ask, ask. Smooth them together. Ask, ask. If you measure how tall something is, you measure its height. Not its height, height. The same mistake I see in this word. Not wait, no. Wait, wait. This word, not come for table, no. It's comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Push it together, comfortable. Vegetable, no. Vegetable, table, veg. Vegetable, vegetable. One type of vegetable is this one. It's not a lettuce, no, it's a lettuce with an i sound, lettuce. Remember and practice those eight tips and I'll see you in the next class.